Hey, thanks for joining me. My name is Stephen D. Morrison. Uh, I just wanted to do a quick 5-10 minute video here um, to talk about my new book. It's called Schleiermacher in Plain English. It's the fourth in my um, Plain English series. Um, I'm very proud of it. I'm excited about having this book out. Um, unlike some of the other books in the series, I took a long time with this one. Um, this was something that I kind of stretched myself. Um, really push myself to to write. Um, so I just want to talk a little bit about kind of my process and why I even chose Schleiermacher. Um, and then I just wanted to read a bit from the introduction of the book just to explain a bit about it. So um, thanks for everybody who's already bought the book. I know a few have already picked it up. I just announced it yesterday, um, but I'm already encouraged to see, you know, a few of you guys are picking it up and reading it and all that. So like I said, I'm going to talk a little bit about it. Um, so Schleiermacher is kind of an odd choice. Obviously, he's not everybody's favorite theologian. He's a kind of a, not only a difficult theologian to read, but he has a troubling reputation. He's not always known as being um, somebody worth reading, um, but I found him to be the opposite. I found him really enjoyable. Um, he was certainly a challenge. Um, he's very tough to read, you know, and I, I had to rely a lot on um, help from others to, to really kind of grasp what he was, he was saying. Um, so he was a really new paradigm for me. So that's why this book took quite a bit longer than I'm used to. Um, not a huge amount by, by publishing standards, but you know it took me a whole year since since I published Jurgen Maltman in plain English, um, the third volume in, in the series, to get through Schleiermacher, just because he has so much material. There's so much to think about. Um, I read his Christian faith, his great dogmatics. I read that twice. You know, and a lot of his other works I had to read a couple times and, you know, really to, to dig into it. And so he was tough, but I, I'm really better off for going through Schleiermacher and I'm really grateful for him. And I've come out with a new appreciation of his work. Um, and as I talk about in the book, I, I think that he's undervalued, even though he's not frequently studied. Um, and even if he is, he's more studied on a negative light is all he's a good punching bag for theology, I guess. Um, he's the he's the classic example of what went wrong with modern theology. Um, and a lot of that has to do with Bart. Bart influenced um, modern theology theology in that sense, kind of turning it away from Schleiermacher. Um, not that he wasn't criti criticized in his own day, but because of the popularity of Bart, um, Schleiermacher's kind of had this reputation of being a dubious um, theologian that just isn't necessarily worth your time to read. But I found the exact opposite, like I said. And um, I'm not done with Schleiermacher. I'm you know, planning to do more with him in the future. I really liked studying him, and I think there's a lot of fruit um, fruit that can be born from his theology, and a lot of, I think it's fertile ground for um, more work. Um, there's a lot of work that can still be done in Schleiermacher's scholarship. Um, so yeah, I my heart for the book, I really hope that it can um, kind of offer a reassessment of Schleiermacher. Particularly from the Bardian perspective, it's I can't make any, um, you know, hide the fact that I I am significantly influenced by Karl Bart, and that um, you know the other two volumes in the series, you know, Bart, Torrance, and Maltman are all in some way related to Bart, um, and so Schleiermacher is a little bit, a little bit of an odd choice, like I mentioned, um, but I I think that he should be read as a Bardian. He should be read. Um, as somebody who appreciates Karl Barth, and I talk about that a little bit in this in this blog post that I shared earlier, um, or actually yesterday, um, where you know Schleiermacher is important to read on his own, but he's especially important as a Bardian just because of how much Bart appreciated with him, appreciated Schleiermacher, and he actually borrowed a lot more from him than he was willing to let on. And I, I go throughout the book, and, and I'm very I'm careful to note any of the points where, where Bart and Schleiermacher agree about something or where they disagree, um, and so I really tried to kind of bring those into communion with each other. But the main heart of the book really is to understand Schleiermacher for Schleiermacher's sake, just because he is a significant theologian. He is extremely influential in so many different fields, not only theology, but philosophy, her philosophy hermeneutics. Um, he helped found the University of Berlin, um, which became extremely influential for how universities are developed in, in the future, um, even up to this day. And so he's extremely important, and I, I, like I said, I benefited a tremendous amount from studying him. Um, but yeah, that's a little bit about my heart. I really hope to just um, kind of revitalize interest in Schleiermacher. Um, from this book, you know, I found him to be extremely interesting, um, and it's really is a shame that people don't read him, and a lot of it is because of Bart, like I said, but, 
he is just difficult. He has a bad reputation. Um, and there, there are some things, and I even admit this in the book, there are some things that are hard to get, get over. Um, but, you know, I think if we read him charitably and we kind of come to a better understanding of his work, um, Schleiermacher can, can be a very fruitful theologian for us to read and, and very helpful. So, with that said, I just wanted to read the beginning section of the introduction from the book, just to kind of give you a little taste of what it is um, that I'm kind of after. So, I'll begin there. History is often unkind to its most original thinkers. Because they challenge us so deeply, we seldom have the patience required for understanding them. Hegel's often quoted saying is apt. A great man condemns the world to the task of explaining him. The greatness of a work does not guarantee it will be understood. The opposite is often the case. We are more, more likely to misunderstand great thinkers than to acknowledge their complexities and take the time to learn from them. It may be an overstatement, but I can think of no figure in recent theological memory misunderstood more severely than Friedrich D. E. Schleiermacher. His legacy is strangely divided. Although few critics deny his significance, he is rarely celebrated. He was an undisputed architect of the modern era, one to whom we all owe a debt, yet his work is often discussed as if it were the root of all our woes. But I am here to say he is not who you think he is. Schleiermacher is not the villain of modern theology. That old, marred image is in, di is in dire need of revision. Among the numerous reasons for the vilification of Schleiermacher is the influence of Karl Barth, the great, the great 20th century theologian and a famous critic of Schleiermacher's theological program. Historical, theolo historical theologians often take Barth's own account of their relationship at face value, that Schleiermacher turned theology into a subjective meditation on human emotions, and Barth saved theology by returning its focus to the Word of God. This is a familiar story I once accepted uncritically. I even passed it along in the first book of this series. But the best thing that can be said of Schleiermacher still today is that he is not what his critics take him to be. My goal for this book is simple. I want to reevaluate Schle re Schleiermacher and come to a new understanding of his legacy, to show how vital his work is for theology today and how severe our, how severe our loss whenever we ignore him. This will require not only the difficult task of understanding him rightly, but of unlearning what we were once taught. And so yeah, that's just a bit a part of the introduction there. Um, so like I said, I'm extremely excited about this book. I'm very proud of it. Um, I really hope that it, it does do that. I really hope that it comes to a new understanding of Schleiermacher and his legacy um, and helps promote his work. I, I came into the book not really expecting to agree with much of Schleiermacher, um, and I left it completely surprised by how much I, I liked Schleiermacher's work. I, I still didn't find myself agreeing with everything, and that's that's fine. It's that's the task of theology. We don't we're not expected to always, you know, agree with every single person we read, um, but it's necessary still to read those great thinkers, and I do consider Schleiermacher a great great thinker of the Christian tradition. Um, certainly in terms of dogmatics, but in um, you know, for so many other reasons as well. But yeah, um, like I said, I'm excited about the book. It's out now. It's available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, iBooks, my own web store. You can download it. Um, it'll be up on like Book Depository eventually for some of the people that can't get, get it shipped within that area. Um, all the Amazon sites across Europe and, and stuff like that. So, so it's available. It's out there. Um, feel free to send me any questions you have or write any more. I'm going to do a couple other videos here about, about Schleiermacher. So those will be coming out later this week. Um, but yeah, I'm excited about it. I hope you guys really enjoy this book. Um, I hope it challenges you as much as it challenged me to write it. Um, I hope it can kind of give you a new perspective like it did me. Um, so that, that's, like I said, thanks for joining in. And um, I hope you guys enjoy Schleiermacher in plain English. Thanks, guys. See ya.